this is deep stretch and will move more like a yin practice. And I love that because there is that movement base to it and then the holding base to it, uh, space about it as well. And this week we're working on the twist, the supine twist. Um, so if you have a blanket, a block, uh, if you have a pillow or bolster, those uh, might be helpful tools. We're going to get started on our um, backs. Just find a comfortable resting position. Get your props nearby. And um, yeah, lay it down. Get comfortable. I'm going to try to let any of our last minute, um, those joining us still, it takes, I'm, all, I'm like late in person for yoga classes if I'm not teaching. So I feel like virtually I'm, I'm consistent. So <laughs> you guys get comfortable. I will say, get that playlist going and take a few deep breaths, clear away anything you're carrying with you from earlier today, anything that might be pulling you into the remainder of your day. Just take a deep breath in at this moment is fleeting. And as simple as an exhale, just let it go. Take a deep breath in, fill up, expand, take up space, and then exhale, feel yourself melt in. Maybe you wanna dim the lights a little, um, kind of get your space set up for what works best for you. And let's just take um, about five cycles of breath. So I want you to take five deep inhales and five long exhales and maybe give them that count of five. So breathe in for five, four, three, two, one, and then exhale that one, two, three, four, five. Breathing in, taking up time. We call it the samavrittis, the patterns, the, um, the similar harmonized patterns of our breath. So breath in, breath out. And after that last round, you're laying on your back. So I just want you to stretch your arms long over your head. Let your legs go long, take a big, big stretch. And as you exhale, hug the knees into your chest. I like to walk my feet in first and then you can hug them in. And yeah, rock a little side to side. Maybe take your hands to your kneecaps and take little circles. Might find that helpful for the low back. And breath in, breath out. Let's just take that right leg long up to the ceiling, catch your left foot onto the ground. Just grab a hold behind that right leg anywhere you can. Flex the right toes first. If it feels right, then you can get that leg in line with your hip. Uh, vertically, press that right foot onto the ceiling and your right hip into the ground, and then point flex a couple times as you breathe in and out. And take a couple circles in one direction, a few circles, and take them in the other direction. Keep pressing that left foot into the ground. Then you'll walk your hands up that right leg. Inhale, lift your head, heart, shoulders. Fold here as you exhale, press your low back down. Breathe in, walk your hands down that right leg. And then as you exhale, maybe draw that right leg a little closer to the upper body. One more inhale. As you exhale, slowly let that right leg go long. Let your left leg go long to meet it. Inhale, reach your arms over your head. Stretch, stretch, stretch. And then exhale, hug the knees into your chest. Maybe a little tuck and drop of the tailbone, a couple circles. 
each direction. And then planting that right foot down, extend your left leg, point and flex your toes. Press that left hip down, reach your left sole up. If you can get it in line with the thigh, you might even draw a little closer. I like to start a little further back. As you exhale, take those circles, breathe in each direction a couple times, a few times. The left toes back, you'll exhale, walk your hands up, really press your low back down, scoop your belly, take a deep breath in. As you exhale, lower your hands one more time, down that leg, breathe in, drawing that left leg towards the upper body. Imagine more space behind the hamstring. And then as you exhale, slowly let that left leg go long to meet your, or come to the ground. One more time, right leg goes long, really stretch, stretch, stretch. Find a little more room in the legs, a little more room in the side ribs, the arms, the armpits, and then as you exhale, both knees into your chest. And let's just rock and roll a few times. I like to extend my legs over my head a couple times. Uh, not always, but it's pretty often. Kind of do what your ritual is. Come on up to seated. We'll work back down to the ground a little bit later. Um, and then if you want to grab a block uh, or even a blanket to sit on, we'll start here. Walking the hands beside you, just kind of feel the shoulders open. And then floating the arms away, breathe in, turn the palms up. As you exhale, bend the elbows, so the goalpost arms, cactus arms, right? And then inhale, draw those elbows back. Notice your ribs starting to splay. Let your belly soften a little. And then as you exhale, hug right arm on top of left. So, and let me marry you. So, right arm on top of left, reach your elbows slightly forward and your shoulder blades back. Take a long breath in and a full breath out. Yeah. Reach those elbows slightly more forward and your shoulder blades further back. Reach your sit bones down and your crown high. Breathe in. As you breathe out, slice those elbows out to the side. Draw your fingers to the sky. And then inhale, elbows back. And this time, as you exhale, left arm on top of right. And try to get those elbows again away in the opposite direction of your upper back. So uh, try to create dimension and volume in your upper torso. Feel the oppositions. Shoulder blades reaching behind you, elbows reaching in front of you. Crown reaching up and your sit bones reaching down. Breathe out. Breathe in. Back of your heart, back ribs and plate. Fill all the way to the back of your lungs. And then exhale one more time. Elbows out to the side. Draw those fingers up. Breathe in. Reach the arms up. Reach and reach and reach and feel that in the shoulders. And then exhale, gently lift. And cross-legged, let's just switch which arms in front or which legs in front, find your opposite leg as you crisscross. And then finding those hands walking out. That's it. Reach that right arm up, take a deep breath in, and exhale, bend over to your left. Keep that right sit bone plugged into the ground, your block, your blanket. Open up the right ribs, gently drawing that left shoulder back. Inhale, maybe looking down. And exhale, looking to that right hand. Inhale, sit up tall. And exhale, set those shoulders down. Kind of find those sit bones rooted. Notice if you start to tilt or tuck, just off, starting to make those observations, reach your left arm up, take a deep breath in, and then exhale, bend over to the other side. So reach from left hip to left fingers. Feel the left lung inflate. Looking down as you exhale or inhale. Finding that breath to your left hand, keeping that right shoulder back. And then inhale, slowly sit up. And we'll work our way off of our prop um, into hands and knees table pose. Really get those hands directly under your shoulders. We'll take our, um, Take our fingers out from our traditional table. Start into the long edges of your mat. Okay, press the ground away with your hands. Look slightly forward. 
And let's just take five circles, working the wrist. We're gonna get to that shoulder pose first. Um, it's a twist, thread the needle. And I like to open up um, the wrist because they're expansion, extension of the stuff that goes on in our shoulders. Take your circles in the counterclockwise or opposite direction five times. And slowly you're going to turn your fingers back as much as you can. And take your hips back towards your heels. Take a deep breath in. Notice um, I'm not sinking down into my scapulas and pressing my hands down into the mat. If you're looking at the camera, there's uh, not a slouching, but an effort to keep ourselves open. And then if you're back further, you can come back forward. And flipping one hand at a time, the back of the hands to the mat, palms turned up. Again, press away with the back of the hands. This might be enough for you. You can shift your hips back and you can even start to curl your fingers Ooh, up. Yeah, it's a real sensation for your wrists, your forearms are in particular it is for me. So if you're anything familiar with that, similar to relate, you know, my toes usually lift up that transfers that tension. It's like some of the body wants to engage. We're just watching for those patterns. We're starting to observe what they are. Let's shake those wrists out. And I'm going to say for thread the needle, um, reaching our hand out at 12 o'clock, I want you to know that that's out in front of your head. So we'll start. I like to twist always to my left first. You can walk that left hand slightly more forward and then your traditional table. Okay. We're going to reach your right arm up. I just like to open up that collarbone, like a habit here ritual. Press away with that left hand. I want you to find that left hand pressing away even as you tuck that right arm under. It's like it's sweeping past your left knee so your head and shoulders come down. And then I feel like my face is not facing the camera, so there we go. So that left arm, we reach in opposition. We keep that left arm spacious, armpit spacious, even as we twist. And then take that left hand out in front of your head at 12 o'clock. And maybe press it slightly away. You'll start to feel this in the right shoulder. We won't um, stay here too, too long, but we are going to stay here for at least a minute or so. So get comfortable. If reaching your hand out in front of your head at 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock doesn't feel, you know, available today, you can press that left palm by your face still under your shoulder. You can even come onto the fingertips trying to stack left shoulder a little bit more on top of the right. And I just want to Give ourselves a timer. So we're twisting, spiraling underneath ourselves. If that isn't available, you can take a twist to your left in another posture. Notice where you put the weight. And this one gets a little awkward, right? Your face is like smashing up against the ground. And you're really like, it's hard to be anywhere else, but it's also kind of hard to be here. And the stretch might feel really good, or it might feel like you're really just jamming into those shoulders a bit more. So be patient with um, the experience. Find your breaths. Maybe that count of five to energetically balance the moment, balance the experience, harmonize itself. You're doing wonderfully. Let's take three more cycles of breath. Really open up the back of that right shoulder as you inhale. Let that exhale soften where that tension's crept in and shifted. If it's in your jaw, in your hips, in your feet, your knees. And once you take that third exhale, you'll plant that left palm um, by the face. You'll inhale, reach that. Right arm up, press the ground away with that left hand, okay? Roll that right wrist out. The hips can open slightly. We're gonna swim that right arm forward and exhale, set it down. And then I like a little cat cow in between. Maybe you like something else. You can play around with that. Find a nice neutral spine on your inhale. You'll walk that right hand slightly forward of your standard table as you breathe out. Reach the left arm up. Inhale.
Press away with that right hand. Try to keep that right armpit spacious as you twist, reaching that left arm past the right knee. And then you can take that right hand out in front of the head at 12 o'clock. You can stay on the fingertips or come onto the fingertips by the face. What do you come up against in this pose? Have you observe what's it like on this side? Find your breath. What is the similarity? What are the similarities um, from one side to the other, from the moments before to this moment right now? What's a little different? What stays the same? Slowing down with the practice. Allow yourselves to check in. Let's take those last three cycles of breath. And as you exhale, bringing that right hand back by the face, pressing the palm firmly down. You'll inhale, sweep that left arm up. Press away with the right hand. So just roll that wrist out. I would again like to suggest swimming that left arm forward. And as you exhale, plant it down. One more time, you can turn the wrists uh, in and the fingers out towards the long edges of your mat, but still keeping your wrist under your shoulders. Or you can turn your fingers back completely, palms. Again, once again, wrists stay under the shoulders and take five circles clockwise with the torso, not just the hips, okay? The whole upper body and lower body moving like you're stirring a pot and take it the other direction. They don't have to be big circles, they're not perfect circles. We're just moving in these directions that are familiar and even back a little bit if you'd like before coming forward bringing the hands back too and then slowly uh, we're going to bring ourselves into right knee towards that right wrist and scooting that left leg back for a pigeon or sleeping swan i uh, i recommend grabbing props it's always nice to have them nearby. Sometimes it looks like me adding them in after a little time. Um, other times it looks like me, you know, taking them out. So whatever props you brought, you can start to stack them either in front of you or underneath you. So they go right underneath that right hip in this case for me. Um, and then you'll slowly come forward. I want you to try to let go of any aggressive flexion in that right foot. It can be pointed, it can be slightly flexed. Um, and then maybe if you can find a place for your head to rest. Giving the head a firm place to rest might even look like, you know, stacking your hands onto your props. Um, for a few breaths, if you can, that contact point for the prefrontal cortex, the space right there, the front of our minds, it can kind of ground us, stimulate that releasing quality. And find a steady breath. We'll be here for a little while. If you ever feel any numbness or like tingliness, um, that 
pins and needles on the way to falling, you know, when something feels like it's falling asleep, you can slowly come out, kind of bend and extend that front leg. It's typically there right around that knee um, or wherever it is, just offer opposition, bend what's extend what's bent and then settle in. But we've got a few minutes. So get cozy, get comfortable. Nothing like being still with ourselves to get the mind wandering. Take that breath way into the back of your lungs. Maybe all the way to the base of your skull. Those of you may, wanting to go a little further into that outer right hip, you can walk your hands over to the left. And sometimes I like to rest a block underneath my hands. So um, in this pose, you get comfortable, you walk that walk over even to the left and then let my shoulders kind of open up a bit more my head drop and press back into that outer right hip so there's a few things you can do in this pose to make it work better for you Take what you need, make what you need work. Notice where your thoughts go. Any patterns? Funny that we're talking about let go or be dragged. I think that um, if you've been to the classes in the last couple of weeks, we've talked about there's a significantly large percentage of our thoughts that are recycled, right? So they just keep coming back. The way we think, the things we think about, um, we give it so much of our time. When we give it this intentional time, this attention time where we become aware, what are we doing? How are we doing it? We can check in and decide, do, do we continue? Do we let go? Or the things we don't want to perpetuate, do we, do we cling? Do we grasp? How does that show up in the body? Does it show up in your jaw? Do you grasp when certain thoughts come to mind in the hips, in the shoulders, your core, your gut? Let's take our last five inhales and exhales here. You might come out of the pose if you're ready, but you've got five more breaths, five more inhales and five more exhales. See if you can Give it just a little more. You might lift up, yeah. Start to rise out of it at least. Walk your hands back through center maybe. The last couple of breaths. And I like to recommend a good just like 
lay. Um, for some of us, laying on our bellies may not be available. So once you walk your hands in, you can either swing that left leg forward and lay down on your back or let your right leg sweep back behind you and lay down on your stomach. And you can rest on an ear or on your forehead or chin or whatever, um, on your belly, you know, on your back, whatever works best for you. And just let both legs go long, let that blood uh, flow through that right knee joint. It's been clamped up, closed up in compression. Find a full breath, take it all the way into the collarbones and into the upper back. Take it down deep into the belly and into the space just above the hips and the low back. And exhale, sigh, let it go. A physical, audible exhale, a deep breath in. Really take it to all the spaces within us and then something to let go, exhale, sigh it away. And take your time, maybe a stretch out long or press back to child's pose as you move into your table on the other side to take pigeon with left knee moving towards your left wrist taking your time left foot towards the middle ish of your mat and yeah beautiful shivani take what you need take your time settle in that's it maria Add in maybe a block under that left hip or a blanket, bolster a block in front of you. If you can find a contact space for your head to make connection, then offer yourself that. If, if not, it's okay. When my, when Charlotte, um, we call her Chuck. My son loves to call her Chuck, it's her nickname. And um, when Chuck, so I interchange it all the time. She is like on the cusp of sleeping or I know she's real tired. I like to take my finger just across the, her forehead around her third eye, that, that grounding engagement of that prefrontal cortex or even downward to kind of help close the eyes and current, you know, this is five month old, um, but I've always offered her that. And I know it works for me. Um, you can even gently, as you work your way down, if you get all the way down to the ground, you can even bring your hands to rest on the crown of your head for a little grounding experience in this moment, in this pose. Get a little handsy with yourself. There's, it's really an awkward time in um, existence right now. We're very communal beings, contact is um, so important to the human experience. And a lot of other cultures make contacts and they touch and they engage and um, we kind of separate ourselves here in the Western culture a bit more in the US in particular, um, American culture. There's less of that. And then we're in the midst of a pandemic and we're separated and isolated. We doubt that and there's, you know, concern around that contact. So give it to yourself, create it here where you can, you know, if your hips need a little love or your foot needs a little love, just get on in there. And if you want to take this into that outer left hip a little bit more, you can walk the hands over to the right. And see what there is to explore. We take these yin style poses, these practices, and we, we, we hold here for a while. Um, so we can explore, open stretch, kind of expand. It's an encouragement. 
releasing tension, tightness, um, where it's settled in our hips kind of hold that for us. So, so we go through life and we go through our um, obstacles and experiences, the challenges, the emotional landscape that comes along with it. We cope with what we can, our subconscious, we, you know, we prioritize it. And then what we can't deal with, we tuck away. And a lot of times we tuck that shit into our hips, right? We get real tight, the hip flexors, the glutes that connects to the low back. So we start to feel low back pain. Um, the guts on the opposite side of that. So we can have tension, complications. Um, so these patterns of our psychology end up in our physiology and we just give ourselves this practice to check in. So notice whatever you feel on this side, it might be similar, it might be very different from the other side. Let's take our five, five rounds of breath here, finishing up this pose. Deep breath back into the back of the lungs, walking the hands in. And then same thing here, you can come to lying on your stomachs or um, onto your backs. Find a version of that that works for you. Allow your legs to meet and just take a few deep breaths. And finally, you'll work your way um, on to your backs with your props nearby. So come onto your back. I want you to flip over if you're on your stomach. And you're just gonna take those arms up nice and long. Deep breath in, stretch apart, tips to toes. And as you exhale, walk your feet to the bottom right corner of your mat. Walk your hands up and over to the top right corner of your mat. Grab opposite elbows and draw that left shoulder down. Crossing left ankle if you'd like. And maybe feeling that even in the front of that left hip a little bit more. I like to turn slightly on towards like the right side of my head. Close the eyes, take a deep breath in. A full breath out. We won't stay long, five cycles of breath on this side. Really exaggerate on the left side from left foot to left armpit to elbow. As you inhale, notice where you're clenching, holding on that right side, the right foot, the right hip flexor, the glute. Just soften that on the exhale. To open up, we must let go. It's kind of a version of this pose. Last round of breath. And you can keep opposite elbows here. Just uncross your left ankle if it was on top. Walk it through center. Okay. And then walk your feet over to the bottom left corner of your mat. Reach over on that side bend to your left and then switch which forearm or elbow is on top. Let that right shoulder blade nestle down onto the ground. And that right ankle might cross on that left. You might turn slightly to your left with the head. 
and then long breath in. Open the right side. Exhale, let the left side release. And then those five deep breaths in and out. Hold the pose. Move the jaw around. Last deep breath in, full breath out. Now releasing the elbows, uncrossing the ankles. Let's stretch it out. Tips to toes, take a deep breath in. And exhale, hug the knees into your chest. All right. So from this pose, um, we're gonna take our open twist here for just a short bit. I'm going to suggest grabbing your block, okay? And I always like to open the twist on the left side. So the knees will go to the right. That block will go over to your right. What you'll do is you'll scoot your hips slightly to the left, okay? Just so your hips are off center from your shoulders a bit. Drop the knees over to the right. And then when you straighten that left leg, you can rest it on your block. And the arms can reach apart. I like to bend my elbows and reach them for the corners of the room. And if you'd like, you can even turn onto your left ear. If you want to add a prop on top, you can you know, do a... But trying to get the left leg extended so it's a little bit more into the IT band. You want to get both legs straight. And you're welcome to do that. You can place one bolster underneath. The right foot and a block between the legs. So you can take the straight leg twist. Um, you can keep just the top leg extended. If that's uh, not for you today, you can just stack knees on top of one another and take your supine twist. This is a little bit of extension, a little bit of expansion. So notice where you're opening, expanding, um, where the tension settles in. Can you breathe in a little more space there? And just keep wringing it out. Knees are still over to the right. We're twisting on our backs. Gaze might be up and over to the left. Might be straight up to the ceiling. See if you can soften those armpits a little on your twist. Your collarbones. Feel your belly button spiraling towards the ground, but uh, it doesn't have to be really efforted. It's just if you could engage it subtly into the twist, the belly button would be working towards the earth.
we're about halfway with this pose. So uh, be patient with yourself. If you feel like bending your knees, if both legs are straight, or if you want to bend that top leg in, you can hit to that space. It might be nice to get that top leg crossed over your bottom leg to get a little into the outside of that left hip and low back, or you may, um, you know, slide props between the shins and kind of soften into the twist a little bit more. Knees again over to the right and uh, gaze to the left. And if you're on the other side on hoop, you're good. Just, you know, reverse what I'm saying. Your right leg's on top, your right leg's on top. It doesn't matter. We're just still on the same side. So we're here for a little while longer. I like to think of spiraling the spine. Um, you just think about like all your organs are inside of you. You're wringing the spine around within itself. Um, it's like a hug from the inside out. We're squeezing out. A physical gesture of surrender to ring, right? To ring out the last bit of letting go. So what can you let go of physically, energetically, um, habitually just observing the things that no longer honor us, work for us. When we say the things no longer serve you, it's like, does that shit work for you? Or does it take you down a, a path? And a path that adds tension. boxes us in, limits our experiences. Let's take a deep breath in, a full breath out. One more time into that collarbone, breathe, 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 look up to the ceiling, breathe out through the mouth. And then slowly you'll work your way, uh, knees to center, face to center. Plant your feet, plant your toes, plant your soles. Feel this moment. Hold on right here to the breath for just a count. And exhale through the mouth. Let it go. Scooting the hips over to the right. You'll move that block over to the left side of the body. Letting the left knee drop over. Right foot can rest on your block. And then Gazing over to the, up to the ceiling and over to the right if you'd like. Maybe bending the elbows. Maybe keeping the arms long, lifting them above shoulder height. That might feel right today on the side. This is our second to last pose. So um, we're near the end. What would you like to do with it, make of it? What are you finding along the experience this moment in time? We talked about patterns and then discernment and then this ability to notice where we're clinging, where we're grasping, where we're holding so firmly, it's, it's dragging us down. This practice is a remembrance, a, a reunion. Reminding us that we are whole and full of possibility and potential. The thoughts we think and the mantra and the affirmations we make in our day, they matter. That our physiology, our psychology, they're connected. Those 90% of our thoughts recycle, repeated to ourselves over and over, that they influence, they, we experience them, the many facets of ourselves. Where are we clinging? Where are we grasping and being dragged? And where is there a little bit more room to let go? Yeah. 
define this specific thought when I catch myself down the rabbit hole. I can follow it back slowly to the thought before it and the thought before that. It's like a sound or a sensation. Even in the body. That was at the seat of it, right? The, the seed of it. It brings me back to the present moment. Allows me to check in. Is that thought or experience even true? It's working our way. To continue seeing ourselves as full and as whole. Potent as we are. Check in with your breath. Let's take about five more rounds. Five more inhales and exhales. Feel that belly button spiral towards the ground. Inhale into the collarbone and feel the gaze lift to the ceiling. Exhale through the mouth. Maybe one more time. Inhale fully. Exhale completely. And then bringing the knees, the feet, the hips, the soles to this moment as you are. I'm gonna offer uh, two options for your last pose before Shavasana. Um, you can take supported bridge to open the hip flexors. We just did like a back bend in that twist. And so the spine's pretty ready for it. Um, you can do supported shoulder stand with the block or blanket or bolster. And so just a matter of where that prop is. So you'll want your block or your whatever it is you're gonna support with. My head and shoulders pressing down, lift the hips up. If you want to go to supported bridge, the block is closer to your the heel of your butt. So it's more behind your sit bones. Uh, your, your sit bones are supported. Uh, and then the back of the tailbone even. You can let the legs go long and that might open up the front of the hips. I like to take the arms long here and like a fall asleep that way. Um, and if you prefer like to get the legs inverted, it's the evening and you want to kind of give the legs a little support, you can move that block up a little further behind the low back, in the back of the sacrum, not quite the low back, but right there on the cusp of it. And then lift one leg followed by the other, extending one leg followed by the other. But the head and shoulders always stay in contact with the ground. Whichever pose you're in, we're going to be here for a few minutes and so um, pick which one and it, it might look like changing which one you're in in a minute or so but I will keep the time and space for us and we'll just take a few minutes to open up those hip flexors or get those legs inverted 
letting of that lymph or blood that's pulled into our feet from our day. Give it composition. Feel the breath in your belly and in your low back and into the mid ribs and into the side ribs, the collarbone, the upper back. Maybe exhaling it through the mouth, letting the jaw soften. You can add a count to your breath to help you center and focus and draw that awareness where you are. And as you pay attention to it, and if you count it, you can add a little space, you can build a little volume, a little room. You can count to six, maybe seven. Maybe a longer exhale is more serving as we end our practice. Or a longer inhale as so your front top lungs are expanding. Take those last five rounds of breath, whatever pose you're in. Five inhales and exhales. Your legs are inverted, you'll bend one knee and then the other, plant one foot and then the other, lifting the hips and moving the block aside. You'll walk the feet in if your legs were long and you're in supported bridge. Wherever you are, come up off of your props, right? Move them aside, but keep your feet on the ground. Keep your knees bent. Once you lower your hips to find the earth, the ground, the mat, the carpet, wherever you are, Keeping the knees bent, walk your feet just a little bit apart and let your inner knees touch. And just like we did early in the seated practice, give yourself a hug with the arms around the chest. Feel the back of your heart press into the ground as you inhale. Exhale, soften the shoulders, switch which arms on top. Take another deep breath in. Exhale. And then you'll slowly allow the arms to fall apart. Your knees can fall apart and your feet can come together. And then you can extend one leg followed by the other. A blanket can go under the head if you'd like. And a micro tuck of the chin to elongate the neck. But find a place to rest, to settle. That there's um, not a significant amount of time left in the practice and I'm gonna hold this space here for you. If you'd like to stop the music, kind of create some silence for yourself, that might be part of your end. One last deep breath in, fill, 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 take up some space. And a long exhale to let it all go. And in the stillness, if you find yourself off, to a different place, a different time. Be generous with yourself, be gracious with yourself. But that's part of the practice, right? Is the catching, the observing, the taking notes when we've wandered. And reuniting the moment at hand, our possibility, our potential.
Start to pay attention to the breath. Notice what happens as you observe it. Does it naturally, naturally grow longer? Is there a pause? Does it flow inhale to exhale, back into inhale? without categorizing it. Just observe it. Without judging it, right? Without judging ourselves, just giving ourselves some space to be and breathe. And take that awareness and expand it down to your feet and out to your fingers. Find movements, the expansions, the contractions that work for you today to slowly awaken. The lovely thing about being at home is that if you're right here and this is where you'd, you'd like to stay, please stay. There's no urgency to leave. And my teacher, Judith Lassiter, would say, if you have time to practice, uh, should be 20 minutes and make it Shavasana, 20 minutes Shavasana, just to counter all of the effort we do in our lives, all the fight, flight and freeze that we experience. This essential part to harmonize it is this letting go, this rest and digest. So stay if you'd like or rise eventually up to seated and you'll find a long spine and taking your time getting there. There's no hurry. Just to scan sit bones, shoulders, jaw, crown, skull, scalp, brain. Take a deep breath in and a long breath out. Allowing the palms to meet over the heart, the chin to dip towards the chest. Gratitude for your effort. This ancient practice reminding us of a union, a potency and potential deep within us, connected to all things, all beings, past, present and future. And then lifting the thumbs to the third eye. May this essence within us remind and uh, inspire our thoughts, our words, our actions, our behaviors and habits are some scaras the patterns in which we move through the world. Bowing forward to silly practice. Namaste.